Hi, this is Paul, developer of Hyperion. I'd like to give you a quick update on the latest features that I've added to version 1.59 of Hyperion. One of the things that users have requested is a animated phase point on the LFO graphs. So I've added a point that goes through the wave shape and indicates the phase of the current active voice. Every time you press a key, the display is updated for the current voice, just like all the other panels in the UI. They are showing the modulation for the current voice. And you can track the phase through your LFO that way. And uh, this is kind of handy, especially when you're doing things like uh, triggered pulses for triggering things like generative patches, or just for understanding how your LFO is affecting filter cutoff. Another thing I've added is graphical fills for the wave shapes. So uh, when it's a bipolar mode LFO, you can see the fill fills under and over the graph. And if I switch to unipolar, it makes it much clearer that the graphical fill is only underneath the wave shape, indicating that the zero point is at the bottom of the display. Another thing I've added is a new oscillator type called the Lo-Fi Oscillator. This oscillator is based on LFO wave shapes including a, a pulse width modulation shape, which goes through to zero. And the default mode of this oscillator is to use bit crushing and no oversampling. So it's quite a noisy oscillator. And depending on the waveform, the shape parameter has different effects, but in most cases it has a pulse width modulation effect. By default, there is no oversampling on this oscillator, so when you play high notes, you'll hear quite a lot of aliasing noise especially if the frequency is being modulated. But you can turn on oversampling and it cuts out some of that aliasing. Another thing I've added is the ability to modulate the phase offset of the modulation oscillator inside phaser and flanger effects. You can do this by connecting a modulation source, such as an LFO, to the phase mod pin of the phaser or flanger nodes. And if you don't want to use any internal modulation, you can turn the speed of the internal modulator down to zero. But you can also have that internal LFO running and still modulate the phase externally. I've added a feedback control on the phaser and flanger, so you have full control over that parameter too now. Quick listen to the flanger. I've also added the ability to see the macro values continuously. So the, the number underneath the macro knobs is also editable by just clicking on it. You can type in a, a value within zero to one. And if you want to see the currently assigned CC, you can click on the MIDI learn button 
and by highlighting the areas with the CC number you can learn a new value or you can double click and also type in a new CC number. Another small tweak I've added is the ability to click on the number in the modulation sources mixer to directly input a number for the amount of modulation from a particular source as well as uh, already being able to edit that value by just dragging the curve and turning the knob. So now if you're looking for a very specific modulation amount you can just type it in. Version 1.59 of Hyperion is now available to download at Traction and Thea, the Platch Player version of Hyperion, has been updated to maintain compatibility with this latest version of Hyperion so that you can make patches using this new lo-fi oscillator and it will work correctly in Thea as well.